The following talk was given at the Insight Meditation Center in Redwood City, California. Please visit our website at audiodharma.org. So I was struck by um, something that um, one of my main teachers, Shinzen Young, said. uh, He said um, he said there are really just two two maxims for spiritual practice. Two kinds of approaches, uh, things that um, are sufficient to guide a spiritual life. And he said, uh, first, uh, don't fight with yourself at any level. He meant a lot by that. I'm not sure how exactly all the things meant by that, but don't fight with yourself at any level. And then the second thing he said was, uh, take feedback. Yeah. And there are a lot of different meanings, uh, connotations of the word feedback. I'll talk about like the concrete sense of taking feedback, but in an important sense, the whole of our Dharma life is about taking feedback is about studying cause and effect, studying our impact on the world and what comes back, studying uh, what the world is like teaching us. Right? Like there's a famous like phrase from Ajahn Chah, like everything is teaching us. But we have to be willing to actually take feedback from the world in order for the world to become our teacher. And so, uh, So this practice of actually taking feedback, becoming responsive to feedback, using feedback, is is part of our gesture in letting go of uh, our fantasized omniscience. You know, like the... Because our minds and what we know is sort of the best working model we have, we just sort of assume that it's the best model of the world. Like we just assume in a certain sense our all-knowing quality, yeah? And so in Buddhism there's there's a greed, hatred, delusion, right? The, The way they sort of classify into these three baskets, three primary ways of suffering, of feeling separate, of feeling alienation, of causing problems. And uh, it's very apparent, you know, if we're, if there's even a modicum of mindfulness, very apparent when greed or hatred is present, right? Like wanting, the, the wanting of the pizza is not like a subtle flavor in the mind, right? And the uh, hatred of something, it also grabs our attention, right? But delusion, how do we wake up from that? Like that's, that's the water we swim in, right? And so, um, feedback, you know, like in its concrete sense, not the metaphorical sense, but feedback, as in, Matthew, I need to talk to you about something, you know. 
this is actually uh, quite valuable in waking up. Uh, because there's always a part of our minds that we don't see. There are always flavors in the mind that we look through rather than look at, you know. And to begin to actually see see this is uh, feedback provides an opportunity to actually see the architecture of the self. Like we don't normally see the way that clinging to self impinges our life. But when we actually get feedback, it in like highlights in technicolor the structure of the self, the architecture, how we cling to certain notions of who we are. And this is a really uh, important aspect of our practice and our insight. And so it's like we need to like um, kind of very actively stimulate the clinging in order to see it more clearly. And there's nothing quite like some critical feedback to highlight where we cling to ideas of who we are, right? The very uh, kind of essence of defensiveness is the protection of a certain kind of self-view, right? Where there's no clinging to self, there's no defensiveness. It doesn't even matter whether the criticism, the feedback is on target or off target. Yeah. If there's no clinging, all of it can actually be, we can open our heart to it. And so in this way, in using feedback, wherever it's coming from, uh, it's actually an opportunity, uh, regardless of whether we think it's right or wrong. Sometimes it's in being misapprehended. It's like somebody mistaking us, misconstruing us. Like they're actually not, they're not actually seeing us accurately. But even in that, we can learn about where we cling. You know? And when something's on target, when it's like on target, um, we can also learn about the kind of places of clinging so sometimes I think about um, a practice, Dharma practice, as becoming uh, becoming unoffendable, you know? meaning that we actually work through the places, the kind of raw places in ego, so that. Um, you can kind of like, you could press anywhere. And there is not going to be uh, pain and defensiveness evoked. Now, that's a kind of ideal in a sense. And in the meantime, what I think we need to be willing to do is tolerate the disorientation that comes when self-view is challenged, right? Because ego is like the reference point for our whole, so much of our mental life, uh, 
when it gets challenged, there is this sense of like falling off a ledge backwards, you know? Like, wait, oh, I'm not that? I'm not like that? I'm not good this way? I'm not what, a, you know? And it's just like, there's this disorientation and the defensiveness is like this scrambling effort to re-solidify the ground to like shore up the sense of who we are and to like really welcome uh, feedback in the critical feedback we actually have to be willing to tolerate that disorientation and to be off our center Now, uh, I think of this as both a, a kind of part of our own practice and our own growing out of delusion in, in more and more liberating ways. But it's also about um, being increasingly safe for others. Like, I'm quite kind of sensitive to the egoic fragilities of the people I'm with, you know? Like in the form of my own teachers, for example. And I find myself like subtly navigating away from any pressure points that they have you know, just trying to stay clear, to not press on that point, maybe. And there's a little bit of uh, uncertainty and a lack of safety in that. I want to be able to press anywhere in their being. and for that not to evoke defensiveness. And to the extent that we can cultivate that kind of openness and porousness, vulnerability, willingness to be wrong, non-defensiveness, we offer a deeper and deeper form of uh, refuge for others. And that's a beautiful thing. So. Okay. So, uh, temple, temple cleaning. <laughs>